four, three, two, one. <laughs> okay, hi everybody. My name is Mike Hayataka, that hoop guy. We're gonna go over our chest roll class review. I officially, on camera, do not care what you do in this video. Please share it, put it anywhere you want. It does not matter to me. Thank you. Cool. So, uh, chest rolls. We gotta do a lot. Try to be concise. I have problems with that. Um, first, we talk about holding the hoop, right? Remember when the hoop is hanging? It's in plane. It's nice and vertical. As soon as we grab it, we start to impart our own planes on it, then we have to compensate. So if we can emulate this hanging motion and this hanging effect in our hole, then our hoop will tend to be more in plane, up and down, okay? So you can do that how I just did it. You can hold it and then bring the bottom part of your palm, the pinky side of your palm to the hoop, right? Don't bring the middle of your, right? You see the difference between here, here. It's about the line of your knuckles not being turned. I want those up and down. The other ways you can do it is you can hold your hand, hand out in front of you, pull your hand back, bring your fingers forward, create this like zigzag shape in your arm, put the hoop against there, hook around with the finger. So I have this hang. We call this a two point stall. One, two point stall. It's hanging here. I can go ahead and have the rest of my fingers involved with this. Okay? I can even rest my wrist down. Uh, just when most people do, this, they tend to turn their hand. Remain in this orientation here. When I have this, this gap is all I need to close to get good force on my hoop, okay? This is all the momentum I need to get a good roll, all right? Given all of that, it's okay. Do whatever you want to do, okay? But this is a good quintessential hoop thing. You can even find two-point stalls in our isolations, right? I'm barely holding the hoop. This is something that can translate to all of your hooping. You don't ever need to be clenching the hoop, okay? Um, so, when we do our roll, it goes over our thumb crotch, right here. Our thumb is here. Another way to experience this is you can make a ring with your pointer and middle finger. Feel this bounce, okay? That's another way to experience the hanging. When we lift up and over, we want to maintain holding the hoop, like kind of as long as we can. That's why the first thing we practice is kind of lifting and letting it go on like the webbing of our hand and coming back down, right? And then we can kind of go a little further, okay? A little further, right? So if you're having trouble getting to roll on your arm, that's how you can work up to it, right? A little lift, down. A little bit further, down, okay? Then we talked about what to do with our hand because we create this negative space right here when we lift up. As we're letting go of the hoop, we want to push our hand down. We want to think about presenting this bony part of our wrist to the hoop. Okay? So it should be up, down. Avoid doing this. Avoid doing this. More of a chop. Chop, chop, chop. Okay? So our hoop should be rolling on the top ridge of our forearm, not this underside of our forearm. Okay? So that's why we want to make sure we don't turn when we're doing this, okay? Uh, we can practice this by just rolling up our arm, catching it, and resetting. And really paying attention, what does my hand look like when I finish? Is it straight or is it down? Right? We want it to be down a little bit. Cool. Then we talk about doing the actual roll. When we cue up and do the roll, it's important that when we look at our hoop, we don't let our shoulders turn. So practice turning your head without your shoulders turning. The other thing is, almost everybody is here. And they need to be here. It's small, we're talking five or 10 degrees, but it makes a big difference. One way you can calibrate is by paying attention to this part of your body. Does the hoop roll on my shoulder or is it in front of my shoulder? If it's in front of my shoulder, I need to open my arm up a little bit more so it rolls on this part. As you're doing your roll, you wanna get them nice and smooth, really pay attention to this part of your body, okay? Um, Cool, if we're gonna lean back, go ahead and lean back a little bit if you want to. It, um, especially if you have a bare polypro hoop that's sliding, that can really help if you lean back a little bit. Please just soften your knees, tuck your tailbone, and engage your abs so we're not holding ourselves with our back, okay? Um, ideally, we don't need to lean back. That's my whole strategy. So instead of pushing my chin into the hoop by leaning back, what I do is I turn my face so the side of my face is facing where the hoop is gonna roll. I let the first edge of the hoop go past my cheek Follow it with my head, 
let the second edge of the hoop go by. You can also just wait for the whole hoop to go by before turning. But it is nice to get this little moment here. Uh, and I, I wish you had facial hair, so it might. If, it, if you do, it's this amazing feeling. It brushes your little, your little hairs on your chin, chin, chin. It's amazing. <laughs> when you get it so close, it's really good. But you might feel it like whoosh by your chin. That's what you want, OK? Um, and yeah, sometimes if you, if you can avoid doing a waist bend, you can kind of do like a yoga ribcage bend to kind of take this angle and make it more horizontal, OK? Ah, a couple things, other things I saw in this workshop. Please avoid rolling the hoop uphill. Wait, get your hand to shoulder height before we let go. I saw a lot of people doing that in this workshop, so try to be aware of that. It's going to reduce the number of variables for practicing because you can ne you're never going to be predicting this angle exactly the same. We can have it nice and flat, much better. I'm now going to run quickly through the variations, okay? I don't remember all the ones I did, so I missed one, call it out, okay? First one we did, back roll. Don't do weird stuff. We already practiced the roll. The only part that's different is here. So for me, what I do is I tell myself I'm doing a chest roll. I get ready, I even lean, I don't even lean when I do a chest roll, but I lean back when I'm thinking about doing a chest roll. And then I go, psych, and I bring my head forward. Okay, and I look at my receiving arm. Just make sure a lot of people, when they do that, this happens. We want to keep that here, okay? Uh, yeah, so just don't change anything about your roll technique when you do that, except for moving your head forward a little bit. Um, then we did the arm lift as like a prerequisite move, the rolling and lifting, okay? When we go and lift, we want our elbow to be nice and straight. We want our fingers pointed towards the ground. We want to lift with our wrist so that we make a platform, a flat platform up here. And ideally, we want it to have a moment before we grab it, okay? Um, if, we roll, if we roll too fast or lift it too slow, the hoop will continue going off. If we lift too fast, the hoop will not get all the way up there. Our goal is to um, equalize the lifting speed with the rolling speed so that the hoop rolls and uh, loses momentum when we get to the top point here, okay? Um, then we did just kind of like, what, that, what is that a prerequisite for? We can do the continuous roll from there, okay? And the key is we lift up just like we were lifting. When we get here, we want to emulate that thing that happened in our arm on our hand. We don't want to get the hoop to come to here and kind of hit it, okay? We want to keep our wrist bent as long as possible before we get up there, and then it's a little flick. You can kind of, um, practice bringing your, oops, we can practice bringing our hands together for a roll. That's a way to like kind of test the speeds there, all right? The other move that this was a prerequisite for is the turning chest roll, not great, but here's the choreography for that. Whatever arm I start with, that leg goes behind. So the first step is rolling and stepping and catching palm up. When we're in this position, now we are going to lift and turn. If I did that lift and turn right, I should end up in an overhand roll right here. Okay? So we do roll and step, lift and turn, roll. We start to take the pauses out. Roll and step and lift and turn and roll. Okay? Um, one, one thing that people were letting happen was they were dragging the hoop. Keep your hand under the hoop when we do this. Um, and you can also start to take out the grip. So instead of grabbing it, we platform it over to the other side, right? It kind of have, it has this swivel all the way over to the other side, okay? Then the best expression of it is on the fingertips, all the way and over. Feels so nice. Uh, okay. What did we do after that? I think we. The, the weird one? Let's end with that one. Or, well, we just okay. We talk about this folded line. True. Yeah. <laughs> um, just we roll it only up to like our elbow pit, and then we serve it up like this. The key is horizontal. Don't scoop or lift. Okay. Uh, we want to match the speed of the hoop. When we get to the end, it should roll down our arm instead of falling into our hand. Okay. So just be aware of moving our arm fast enough so we meet this like snapshot right here, okay, instead of it being here. We're not pushing it, we're supporting underneath it. That can happen low on your wrist, it can happen higher on your arm, okay? 
Um, cool. We also talk about the neck wrap. One. Um, it's all the hardest part is the the middle out, right? The neck, vertical neck covering to the roll. Um, getting it to roll out of there is all about pulling your head out at the last possible minute. So uh, the hoop is coming up. I'm like, ah, right, and barely. It's, it kind of like almost hooks on my ear, and I look at the hand I want it to go to. So I'm rolling from this hand, and I look at this hand when that happens. To build up, you can kind of get used to diving your head in late, getting a couple rotations, and then pulling out and looking at that hand. Okay? Um, yeah, I think the, the, just just that is a great move. Okay? So whatever hand you push with, that's where the hoop is going. Okay? Uh, then we what do we what do we? Oh, we talk about the toss. Let's talk, let's talk about the toss. Okay, so the biggest mistake people make with the catching into a chest roll is they try to get really far underneath the hoop. You want your hoop, your hand, at like the middle line of the hoop, not past the middle line. Okay, so you can practice tossing so that you have control over the distance the hoop lands for you. Okay, and for most people, it feel it's going to feel like you're too far away from the hoop, right? Because we're not used to judging the distance from this angle. Okay? So just make sure that we're not under it. You see how bouncy it is when you're too far under it. You want to stay further back from it than you think. Okay, Just make a little ramp with your wrist here. Kind of just resist the pushing, the falling of the hoop when that happens. <laughs> what else did we do? Yeah. The neck wrap? I mean, we don't have... Okay, yeah. The chest cup thingy. Oh, wait, I think we did We did that one. Yes. You're talking about this one? Yes. Yeah, that's, that's with the neck wrap. Uh, it's just whatever hand you roll with, you step behind. It's just doing a barrel turn in a neck wrap. So just practicing this to here. Okay? Um, and yeah, if you just practice this move, it's the same as that, just on your neck. Anything else that we did? I can't remember. We didn't even do C rolls. Sweet. Well, okay, thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.